Now it's time for Viking Mail Call. A weekly show where you, the fans, get to ask the questions on your mind and have them answered by former Minnesota Vikings linebacker and coach, Pete Bursich. And now your host, Tom Moore. Hello everyone and welcome back to Vikings Mail Call. I'm Tom Moore from VikeFans.com and as we do each week from training camp to the Super Bowl, I'm joined by former Minnesota Vikings linebacker and coach and now Vikings game day radio color analyst, Pete Versich. Well Pete, during last week's show, you were on a lake doing double duty. And you were catching some fish and you were also talking some football. But after the show, most of the fan feedback was questioning what lake you were on and how many you caught. So fill everybody in and don't lie to them. <laughs> well, I don't kiss and tell so I can't. But I will be on Waconia at about 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. So I'll give you that spot. It's a big enough lake where, you know, you, you, it's it's kind of hard to, to dial in on them. But every chance I get, hopefully I'll be up this Saturday and Sunday for uh, a couple more days of fishing. So it'll be a perfect 4th of July weekend uh, getting on the lake a few times. It's amazing because every time I talk to you, nothing ever sounds like a job. It just sounds like fun. <laughs> no, that's because he only talked to me about once a week. Well, well there you go. <laughs> I was actually in Tulsa all week uh, with the heat index and work boots and jeans and the whole thing. So uh, it's uh, you know it's a little, it's a little. Actually, it's what seventy nine up here. It's a little chilly, a little, a little cold up here. Yeah, well, you know, I, yeah, I'm sitting in 100 degrees, so I know it. But i got to tell you tonight, Pete, we get something that's a real treat for you. We get a lot of former players around the league, as well as some great celebrities from the sports and entertainment world to join us. But tonight, you get to talk a little linebacking with one of the current members of the Viking squad. Now, he stepped into the starting lineup last year uh, in 2014 and recorded 65 tackles and registered the fastest touchdown scored from scrimmage in Viking history when he intercepted the Jets' first pass from scrimmage and took it the other way for the touchdown. So, Pete, can you tell the fans who's joined us to talk some Viking? football tonight. Now we got touchdown Gerald Hodges is who we have tonight. And what was a very winnable game on Monday night against the Dolphins. They pass on first down and it's picked off. Gerald Hodges inside the 10 and he is in for the pick six and a nightmare start for Geno Smith and the Jets. Welcome Gerald. How you doing, guys, man? Doing great. How you guys doing today? Doing fantastic. And yeah, i got to tell you, Gerald, before I turn it over to Pete, a couple of questions for you I had. And so many Viking fans have asked me to get your perspective on the difference between the defense you learned in your second year under Mike Zimmer versus the defense you played in your rookie seasons. What are the biggest changes you faced last year, and how tough was it to make the change for a different defense? The biggest change is uh, maybe the concepts. Every head coach, every defensive coordinator has concepts as far as our defense. How they how they strategize for our defense, and uh, I just think the defense that we had this year coming in, rather than one my uh, my rookie year, it was just just different concepts. You know, uh, I wouldn't fairly say it's, it's that much of a difference. It's just different concepts. You know, saying different alignments, just little just little tweaks in defense. But I wouldn't say it's that much different. You know, but other than just the concepts you get out of the defense. Let me ask you something. As fans, when we look at it, we we see it as looking much more aggressive. Would you say that's true? Um, it it just depends. I mean, it's definitely aggressive defense. I mean, like I said, week in and week out, we have blitzes going in, you know. But um, it just like I said, it depends on your coach and his strategy and how he decides to attack certain offenses. You know, see how offenses line up against defenses. You know, and see and see what and see what type of pressure you can get off. But like I said, it depends all in like your defensive coordinator and your head coach and how they want to call that game and strategize versus that offense. Hey Tom. Yep. Tom. That's Gerald's nice way of saying the more that stink in Tampa, too. That's, that, that was just his – I mean, let me interpret those last uh, two, three minutes of, uh, of what he had to say, and now that they get the pattern read and, and play some other coverages, uh, they're enjoying it. Let's just, let's just leave it at that. Well, and by the way, Gerald, <laughs> if you hadn't figured it out, Gerald, we have a hard time getting Pete to say what's on his mind, so you got to get used to that. <laughs> oh, yes, sir. That's, that's fine with me, man. That's fine with me. Well, I'll tell you what. You know, we talked about your interception uh, last season for a touchdown versus the Jets in the opening. And I wondered, how much does it help you to read pass defenses? After you you were a standout quarterback in high school in New Jersey for three seasons, does that make a big difference in your ability to read a quarterback? Um, I might could get away with, with saying that in college, but an NFL man is just, those guys are professionals, you know. Those guys, I mean, like you say, you get a feel for offense, you know, and, and like, you know what I'm saying, certain things, the, the fundamentals, how certain things go. But when you get to that level, you know, those, those quarterbacks, those guys are professionals, man, and they've been doing that, and that's their job to do that. You know, so it's kind of, you like, you know what I'm saying, it goes back to those concepts, you know, and, and trying to put, 
calling the right defense versus the right offense and things like that, you know. So, and, and that helps a lot, you know, with reading your pass and things like that, you know. You study, you study pounding it, pounding it, pounding it, watching film and going over those concepts and getting the game, you know, it's, it's just like rehearsal. So the last two questions I have for you that are really together is, so with that quarterback experience, have you ever picked up a ball in practice and tried to challenge Teddy Bridgewater? And most importantly, if injuries strike the team, are you ready to step in at quarterback and help out? No, nah, I, I never challenge Teddy, man. I, ne- I never challenge him. You know he's a cool guy. I never challenge him. He's very competitive, though, but I never got a chance to challenge him. And, and if it calls for me to come suit up, you know, and, and, and play quarterback, I'm ready to go. All right, sounds good. Well, Pete, I'm going to turn it over to you to talk some linebacking with Gerald. Well, you see, with the, with the quarterback experience, you'd be the perfect uh, up back on a fake punt where you could throw the football. See, so we'll keep that one. Uh, we'll keep that one quiet. And, Gerald, you did get a chance, and, and congratulations on, on getting out there and, and and playing some defense. And I know uh, on my track, starting playing a lot of special teams, and eventually get a chance to play. Tell the listeners the difference. And just uh, how, you know, everything from how you feel on Monday after a game to the preparation during the week when you when you know you have a chance to get out there and you know you're going to be out of the field as opposed to playing defense as opposed to just uh, covering kicks. Yeah, well, man, like you said, to start on that, uh, how the body feels, you know what I'm saying, from a difference from playing special teams and, and various and scarce special teams to playing a full game as a starter. That, that special teams, you know, you come right back in on Monday, you know what I'm saying, you watch film, you ready to lift. Guys that then started a, a, a full game, you know what I'm saying, they don't even want to take that optional day lift on Monday. They'll rather, <laughs> they'll rather go in on Tuesday, you know, but guys, you know, that, that play special teams, you know, they're ready to jump right back in there. You know, I mean, special teams take nothing from it. You know, it's, it's rough out there on special teams, but as far as, you know, the pounding on your legs and the pounding on your body, you know, you might get about 19 – the 20 snaps on special teams compared to if you're on defense, that's 85 snaps. You know what I'm saying? And then mm-hmm. depending on depending on the position you're playing on defense, man, you're you're really pounding. Like you know what I'm saying? So your body takes a toll, man. And as a rookie, yeah. what time was your lifting time on an, uh, on a Monday morning? Oh man, <laughs> probably like <laughs> six. What I want to say like eight thirty, nine o'clock. You know? Oh yeah, okay, that's not too bad. Yeah, that, and that's that still after a Monday game. That's, actually, that's, 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 that's plenty early enough. Actually, last year, to be honest, last year, my second year, it was I think it was that time. My rookie year, I think it was in between the rookies was in between seven and seven thirty because we had to do the. I think the, the CBA and the NFLPA has the like the CBA meetings we have to have and things like that. So we would have to get up and and it'd be a quick turnover right early in the morning and get a quick look. Gerald, <laughs> <laughs> what? Let me ask you this. I know. Uh, one of the big things for, for everybody is, uh, you know, Adrian Peterson back in the locker room. So now that he's back, has there been any difference? Uh, you know, I mean, is it just business as usual with uh, with him in the room? Or did, uh, you know, has it been a little different? Has the guy perked up a little bit knowing that, uh, you know, you have the, the weapon back at running back? Oh, it's it's totally been nothing but business. From the time we we stepped foot back in there from unofficial uh, workouts and mini camp, you know, from all the way from the – the strength conditioning coaches to the head coach, you know what I'm saying, to the to the, the, the camera guys, everyone. Everyone was back to business. And, and when Adrian walked in there, it was right back to business, you know, and, and everyone just, you know what I'm saying, kept rolling. And it was a smooth transition when he came in. And it was like he never missed a step, you know what I'm saying. And that and that goes as far as from the locker room all the way to the field, not missing a step. I mean, he looks great. And, and, and after seeing him on the field and then just after seeing him interact with everybody and just seeing everything, smooth as it was, you know what I'm saying, after everything that happened, and seeing him come back in there in the locker room and on the field, it, it was just been a great transition, you know what I'm saying, and, and the tail end on having him back, well, like you said, he, he, that, that's Adrian Peterson, you you, you want to have him on your team no matter what, definitely happy to have him back. And so, what, and it was, uh, what, eight years ago when he started, so where, where did that put you? You were probably, what, junior high school when he started playing? Uh, eight years ago. What year? Two thousand. <laughs> Man, that was some time. That was some time. Ago. <laughs> That's the crazy thing, you know. When I showed up, and, you know, I'm playing with Warren Moon and guys like Randall McDaniel and Jack Del Rio, and, and you know, you, you watch these guys in high school or watch these guys in grade school, and then all of a sudden you're out there, you know, Chris Carter, you're out there playing with them. It's a, it, it's a pretty cool thing. Uh, with staying on the topic of Coach Zimmer. One of the things Adrian has said and a number of players have said, they've all said how much they've gone out of their way to say how much they respect the coach. And we get to see him a little bit off the field, 
Uh, but we're not in the meetings. Uh, you guys spend uh, you know quite a bit of time with him. What about him has produced that? Is that just faith in in what he's trying to teach and what he's trying to coach? Coach Zimmer, he's hardcore. He's old school, hardcore, and you have no choice but to respect him. You know the way you know the way he handles himself, the way he handles things off the field, on the field, the way he takes his time out with each player. You know and things like that. You know you have to respect him and. I got to, I give him the utmost respect, you know. He, he's hardcore and he's going to push you. He's going to try to make you, even though perfect is a, is a long reach from a, from from everyone, he's going to try to get you to reach perfect. And he, like I said, he's a hardcore coach and you have, you have no choice but to respect him, you know. Well, explain to us a little bit more about what old school and hardcore means to, to players. I mean, uh, we hear those terms, and but I don't know if everybody really knows what the what those terms mean. Like you rough like that. You know, we all had that back in the day, like Pop Warner, like discipline, hand on the line, run sprints, run sprints. All right, you guys don't want to be disciplined. We're going to run sprints all night until the lights come off, you know, that type of old school hardcore. Like, you know, like like get all up in your stuff. He's only, what, 5'8", but he'll be up in, you know, saying someone that's 6'6", six, six, all up in her, you know, all up in her stuff, you know, just hardcore, you know what I'm saying, hardcore in your field yep. that you know, you know what I'm saying, when you're right, he'll definitely let you know where you're wrong. One of your teammates, Anthony Barr, had a, had a very good rookie campaign. Tell us a little bit about what he brings to the table and what he's like in the meeting rooms and as a teammate. He's great, man, all around. He's quiet, quiet guy. He, he, he brings his lunch pill and he goes to work. He's, um, to speak about his athleticism, man, is unbelievable. He's, he's a bit of a freakish athlete, is he not? Yeah, way, way a bit of a freakish athlete, man. And like I said, he, how you see his body, how you see him move, that's how he plays, man. He's a freakish athlete. And when he brings his lunch pill, man, it, you don't want to be in his way, man. Like I said, he's a hardcore person. You know what I'm saying? You wouldn't tell, you know what I'm saying, by the way he carries himself. You know what I'm saying? Quiet, quiet person stays to himself. And he raised for business all the time. And the, and the Vikings decided to, you know, since they worked with Anthony Barr, they would try bringing in his teammate, Eric Kendricks. And uh, how has he looked? Has he had the, the, the deer in the headlights kind of thing with, with the new defense and, and with uh, how the NFL works? Oh, yes, sir. I mean, I, I, have to comm- I have to commend the young fella, you know, because he definitely came in with head on his shoulders, ready to go in there and learn that defense as fast as he can. And he's been coming along great, man. Like I said, he's been picking up the defense great. He's been looking great on the field taking care of his business off the field and things like that. And he looks great out there. We all have those rookie moments where things get fast, but like I said, he's been handling <laughs> things. Yeah, he's definitely been handling things well, you know what I'm saying? I definitely have to commend him on that. Of the guys that you've played against, who thus far has stood out to you? As, you know, running backs, quarterbacks, guys on offense, maybe some names that, uh, you know, we as fans don't normally uh, hear or talk about much. But uh, over the past couple seasons, who stands out? I mean, I remember when I played, it was always watching film on Barry Sanders and how good he was. I mean, who out there is is that good? Um, well, you know, a uh, back I played against this year uh, is, is pretty good. I think he's known now. I think after this year, you know what I'm saying. But the guy Bell from uh, Detroit, number thirty-five, George Bell, right? Yes, yeah, sir. He's a great back. You know what I'm saying. He's definitely a tough one. That brings his lunch pail when, when he comes to play as well. And he definitely was a tough guy to play. He definitely someone who stuck out against me when I played against him as, as well. Yeah, and, and that's good to hear. I mean, I know they rolled him out against us uh, a couple of years ago. And, and I remember we were all saying the name because no one had heard it before. But it's it's good to hear that you know, he's a good running back and that, uh, in fact, those yards that he gained were not us allowing him, but pretty well, pretty hard earned. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very, very hard. And, uh, like I said, when he's coming through the hole, you know, he's bringing it. He's not a small guy, so when he's coming, he's, he's coming for business. All right, Gerald, I got another question. I did some scouting on you, uh, and I'm going to ask you a true and false question. True or false, the fact that you were able to fill your Camaro with diesel fuel. Is that true or false? <laughs> <laughs> that is true. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Tell us, oh, how man. did that work out? <laughs> I couldn't believe I did it, man. My, my, rookie, my rookie year, man, I, I got a Camaro, a brand-new Camaro, you know, a couple miles on there. And, I, and I'm and i in Minnesota, and I'm from New Jersey. New Jersey, they pump me gas. I get to Minnesota. That's right. Pump gas, yeah. Man. I, I pull up at a diesel nozzle and I'm sitting there holding the, the diesel nozzle on my gas tank and the, and the gas spray is just squirting everywhere and I'm like why isn't this whole sitting and I, I drive I drive a mile and a half down the road my car just shuts off on me. oh man 
So it was a rookie mistake, right? You can just yes, chalk sir. it up as a rookie season mistake. Uh, who on the team do you hang out most with? Who uh, who have you struck up a friendship with? Because as you know, that it's different in the NFL and is in college. I mean, when the season's over, everybody kind of goes their separate ways. And and uh, so, who on the team uh, do you spend most of your time with? Well, my first two years, I uh, I built I built a strong relationship with guys like Demarcus Sanford and, and guys like uh, Mr. Raymond and them guys like that. You know, guys that aren't with the team right now. But uh, this this past year and uh, last year, you know, I, I spent a lot of time with some of the young guys that just came in. Guys like Anton Exum, uh, Jabari Price, Captain Marlin, guys like that. You know, to sit around. Those guys love to joke around and laugh, man. And, you know, I sit around and joke around and laugh with the guys. But, I mean, when it comes to just, like, hanging with guys on the team, man, I, I, I didn't hang with everyone on the team. You know what I'm saying? Everyone. You know, it's, everyone's fun to be around. Everyone has their own personality. And it's just I'm one of them type of guys that enjoy different personalities because it's exciting and it's fun to me so hey pete it sounds like he, he's here's a linebacker hanging out with defensive back what's that all about <laughs> uh, yeah i mean it, it's uh it's okay those dbs want to get around the big guys a little bit and, you know, think, they can come, think they can come into paint and, and, and take care of business you know usually safeties and corners are just wide receivers you can't catch once they realize they can't catch they think they can hit Especially yeah. safeties, you know. So they they try to live in our world, but they really they really can't. So they they do after hours and things. They try they try to try. Hope it rubs off on them a little bit, right? <laughs> I, I totally agree. I totally and then when agree. and then when the linebackers are picking balls off and returning them for touchdowns, we're doing their job too. Yeah. So you know. <laughs> That's always a good argument when something like that happens. <laughs> well, you know, i got to ask this question. You may not know this, Gerald, but in his playing days with Repeat, he was one, known as one of the biggest pranksters on the team. And you talk about, you know, you like to hang out guys who have a good time and they like to laugh. So i got to ask you, when you're in the locker room, what's the best prank you ever saw pulled since you've been in Minnesota? And more importantly, which one of your teammates on the squad today do you have to be most wary of, of pulling something on you? That is definitely a good one. Uh, I think my rookie year, it was freezing cold outside, and they put Jeff Locke's pants outside while we were at practice, and they literally <laughs> froze, literally froze, just froze. It, it, but they they it, dipped them in water first, though, right? Yeah, no, 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 no. no dipped in the water, just went outside. It was like a little flurry, and it was freezing cold outside, and, they, and his pants froze. And it, it was coming, you know, you know, around that nighttime, around, around come up in the practice around when it gets cold. It's nighttime, so, man, his pants are frozen solid. I mean, I've seen some things going in the locker room. I don't want to speak on this crazy, man. <laughs> and they come in, they come in, if you lay them out just right, they come in looking like two-by-fours. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, with that in mind, who's that guy you got to watch out for? I mean, as fans, we're always seeing everybody looks so friendly, they look so nice, they're great players. But who's that guy you got to watch out for who's going to pull something on when you? It, when it comes to that, I would have to give the top two – to either Sharif Floyd or Brian Robinson. Those two, when it comes to that type of stuff, they don't get bored with it. Like, they just go. <laughs> like, That's awesome. Just, it's definitely fun. I, I don't like to get into that because I just I can't do it. Like, those guys go. Those boys can go. I can't do it. <laughs> Have you uh, had a chance to go out fishing with Brian Robinson yet? No, but I always tell him. I tell him every time because he, he brought his boat up to practice a couple times. And me and him always be talking and stuff like that. I'm like, yo, man, I'm going to go fishing with you. He's like, yeah, man, I hear you. You know, you always like, yeah, I hear you, I hear you. And I always tell him, I'm definitely going to try to go fishing with him one of these times. And I'll always tease him about it anyway. So I got to go with him one of these times. That sounds good. I know uh, I had a chance to talk to Ish Monroe, who's a professional. He's on the professional bass tour. And uh, he's going to be out at the Oakland game. So uh, if you get good friends with him, uh, he'll definitely get out there with a real pro. I know Brian likes to think he's good, but this guy knows his stuff. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, the real question is, you know, Gerald, when you grew up in New Jersey, other than Lake of Patcong, where do you go to fish up there, and what in the world do you catch? I mean, I see some guys. We have a, we got, like, a little pond, a little creek, you know what I'm saying? Delaware, Delaware River runs through my town. So you can just sit on the train tracks and go swimming, or we have, like, you can sit on the edge of the road and just throw your rope in, you know what I'm saying? On, and um, on right in the Delaware River, right through, it goes right through my town. So, uh, But I haven't been fishing in years. I haven't been fishing since I've been, like, 13 with my father. I think that was the last time I went fishing. Something well, maybe we'll have to take care of that for you, Gerald. Yes, sir. I definitely want we'll to get do you it out. soon. Well, Jared, listen, we appreciate you joining us tonight and giving the fans an opportunity to really hear what it's like to be on the current squad and working in that defense. So it's just really great to have you here. 
Yes, sir. I appreciate you guys totally, man. I most respect for having me. Not a problem. And before we go, we want to remind our listeners to follow Gerald on Twitter at G underscore Hodges 6 to check out his Viking thoughts from training camp and during the season. And don't forget to keep up to date on all things football on Pete Bursich's site, which can be found at PeteBFootball.com. So until next week, for Pete Bursich, I'm Tom Moore. So long, everyone. Woo! <laughs>